Hey guys, Kevin here. In this video, we'll look at a more advanced usage of the controllers and models within Type Rocket for post types. The post type that we will be looking at is the post post type. And with this post type, we want to look at having a little bit more performant fields. Now, whenever you create custom fields in Type Rocket, it will automatically save those fields to the metadata table. And so let's take a look at that real quick. Jump over to the database here, and we'll see that we have, um, here we are, post meta. So over here, we can see that we have meta, meta ID, a post ID, and a uh, meta key. However, if you've done any kind of SQL queries against a table like this, for example, on this table 39, or this post ID of 39, we have several meta keys and different values for those. And then querying and pulling out specific posts based on these meta keys can be quite difficult. And so we're gonna want to use from time to time a custom database table in order to query our post types. And that's an example that I've built over here. So here I have a custom database table called post details. And within post details, it has an ID, a post ID and a subtitle. So in our example, we could begin to add more and more fields. Uh, let's do that now. So I'll jump over here and design the table. And then I'm going to add a column and I'm going to call this post details. Okay. That'll be a varchar and then I'll have a certain number of characters that I can use. I'll save that out. Go back here and then refresh this bit here. And now I have post details. So the more fields I begin to add, the easier this is to query. I can keep going out and if, when I'm ready to normalize it, I can normalize it. Again, post net meta is nice, but it's more of a key value store and that's really hard to query. So let's look at how we would manage this type of relationship within type rocket. So, I've got our custom post type here and I've added some custom fields, a subtitle and a post art. Okay. And then maybe I want to add those post details that I had entered before into the database. So now I have all of the database columns here. And the way that I can set this up is I can connect my form to the specific relationship on my post model. And what does that mean? It means that if I jump over to my post model here, you'll see that I've made some edits. Now, when you see yours, it's gonna look something like this with just the post type. However, I have these modifications. I have a meta list property set, which is going to exclude details from being saved to the meta section because I want the details to be saved to the separate database. And then here I have a has one relationship with post details. It's another model that I have set up. And so whenever the system looks for details, which this details gets called whenever um, the group does a lookup on the details here. So it's going to look for those details and then it's going to pull in my post details, which are here. And we'll see inside my post details, I have some fillable fields and we'll look at this in a second and why that's important. We have a format, which we have not looked at yet, which we'll cover that as well, It'll help sanitize some data. It tells us what table or resource this is located at. So post details is where this model is connected. If I jump over to the database, we'll see that we are using the WP posts details. And then over here, I also have um, as part of this post details relationship, it has a relationship right back to the post. So it belongs to this post. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So that's how we have that set up. And so, like I said, whenever the form here calls the data for um, the specific group, which is details, it will then pull in the subtitle, the post details, which is the thing that we just added and it's going to pull in the post art, which the ID for that has been shifted by using this set name method. So I called it media ID, which then relates back to this media ID here. Okay, 
So if I'm on the page here and I refresh, I can update this title and we'll look at how the controller is set up for this in a second. So my post subtitle, update that. And we'll see that that data has saved. If I jump back over to the database, the post subtitle, refresh, it says my post. Back in the code, we have the post controller. So I've modified the original post controller, which we looked at in a previous video where you could do this. So the post controller would look like this if it's for you. I have this extra method on update setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull in the fields for the details. And we'll look at this in more depth in a second. We'll look at the request as it comes through. We then create a new post details model. And then we look for an existing one or we create a new one. And then based on that result, we'll save the custom fields to the post details section and that will save it to the database. And it's that simple, just overriding the existing update method for our particular controller. And then we call what the parent does before, which will save all of our metadata and custom fields, that sort of thing, which is the default out of Type Rocket. So if we look at here, we kind of see all the stuff that it's doing automatically for us still. But this is the custom stuff that we've added. Okay, now if I go back to the screen here and I try to fill in these post details, my details, and save this, we will see that the data is not saved. And that's because by default, custom models, like this post details, automatically block the saving of information. This is not like a custom post type. Um, this is a custom table and so we have to define what fields are fillable. Um, and what I mean by that is in the controller here, we have the save method, which is automatically going to save any data that's passed through, but it will only save data that is inside the fillable section. If I wanted to set that data explicitly, which we'll look at in another models video, it would um, save that data in that way. And so if I go back over to my post details in order to save post details, I just have to save the ID of that field to the fillable section. And then in this media section, it's going to take whatever data is passed into the model. And just before it saves it, it's going to format it. And in this case, we're going to cast the value to an integer. And this is helpful if maybe there's bad data that's being passed into the system, it can sanitize it before it enters the database. So let's go back to our um, web page here and let's try saving these details. My details. Update this. We'll say that it now see it. We will see that it now says my details. So let's take a look at that request as it comes through. I'm going to turn on me my debugger and then jump over to the controller for this and then inspect this at this level. And we're going to just pull this up so we can kind of see how the data passes through. I'm going to update this again. And then we'll see here that my fields are located from that request of subtitle, post details, and media ID. So those are my fields, and I've gotten that from this details section of the request. So if I look at the post data here, there's a lot of different data, but type rocket's what I care about. And then we'll see we have SEO from that meta box that was below, and then the details section, which was grouped. And so that group section essentially drops the content from that particular uh, set of fields into, it basically groups them into an array, okay? So that's what this is doing here. It's grouping this set of fields into an array for me. Okay, back at the controller. And then because we fetch that as fields here, we have all that data. And then we pass this array in, we just have to make sure that these specific keys are available within the fillable section, which they are here, okay? And so that's how we would do a quick little save and call on this data. So let's close this out in my debug session. 
And here we can kind of see how this little bit of code has let us offload some of our custom fields into a custom table instead of putting it into the default WordPress posts meta table. So that's it for this more advanced version of models and controllers with post types. And we'll look closer at forms and how all of this kind of works behind the scenes to actually pull in that data from the model. Um, again, the key here is on this posts model, we have a function called details. And this details piece is what's going to define what our group should be. So I wanna pull in this relationship of details and then in order to pull that in inside my form, I just have to make sure my group name is the same as that method. But like I said, this is just an example of some more advanced features that you can do with post types, models, and controllers. In a future video, we'll look more in depth at the forms and the fields.